All right, so we're outside of a 2019 Honda HRV. This is the Touring Edition. First way you can tell is I've got LED head uh, headlights along with daytime running lights on the vehicle. Uh, you'll see it's got the honeycomb finish along the grill and then a smoked uh, chrome grill. Uh, on top, you're always going to notice that it has the uh, the chrome roof rails. Uh, the only two models that have that standard are the Sport and the HRV Touring. And then I've got a little different wheel look to this one versus a Sport. So it's a dead giveaway if you're looking at this vehicle. So let's move around to the back of this car. I'll start you there and show you some things, and we'll go from there. First off, I'll point it. It's always badge, so you'll know if you're looking at the back of the car. Uh, and I've got privacy tint on the glass. So when I pop open the back, this is what kind of cargo space I'm working with. If you're considering this to like a CRV, to give you an idea of the spacing, CRV is a little bit wider, and depth-wise, that's about what you're giving up on a CRV is the bumper space. So just something to know. Car comes with corporate format, so that's what's in the car. I'm gonna throw these out of the way real quick. Down below, that is my spare. So I've got all my necessary equipment for the spare, jack and all that in case I need to change it. It does come with a spare, which is nice to know because a lot of new cars don't. Um, now, in the back, I do have safety setup. So if I want to connect up uh, and put a car seat in, you can see my anchors are right there. And I'll show you the other spots in the back. Now, throwing my seats down, I can do it from the back of the car. It's kind of nice to know that you can do that. You don't have to walk around if you don't want to. Let me throw that down. And then you can see an idea for my spacing. I got a lot of space I can work with from here. So if camping went awry, no big deal. I can throw my sleeping bag in the back and I could sleep in this thing. It's super flat, so it's easy to use. If I needed to lay down a mirror or something big that didn't allow for flexing, I'm still capable of doing it. So let's move into the second row and show you some things. First thing I'll point out is your doors. They open from here. So it's a little bit different look. A lot of people think this is a two door from the, the side. It's just a different setup as far as your door handles goes. Uh, one thing I will stop and I'll just quickly pause on this. So if you wanted some of the details off this, you can pause and see them. Uh, and I'll point out that it is at 26 in the, uh, the city and 31 on the highway. So that way you have some general details. Five star overall crash rating, right? So now that I have these second row thrown down, I'm gonna throw them up. And then not only am I gonna throw them up, but I'm gonna throw them all the way up and show you how that works. So leather interior, cause it is a touring model. My EXL and above comes with that. And it is perforated. So it's kind of a nice look to the leather. Now, if I need to throw these all the way up because I have a wet dog that I don't want to put on my interior, if I have a bicycle that I want to throw in there, excuse me, let me throw that back up. If I've got potted plants or a mirror or something of that nature, I absolutely can. So that's how that works. All I've got to do, lock this in place and it'll hold it. I can do that on both sides. So it's a good amount of space you can work with. Only two of my cars do this, the HRV and the Honda Fit. Now in the back, I've got headrests that raise on up or I can keep them down if I want visibility while I'm driving around by myself. You'll see I do have speakers in the back along with a uh, power outlet back here if I've got somebody back here who needs to charge anything. It's a leather finish on the doors along with the seats uh, and on the, uh, the, the consoles where your arms are gonna rest is always black. So let's move up to the front. The first thing I'll point out is it is keyless entry. So I can walk up, grab the handle, it'll automatically open for me. If I needed to lock the doors, press and hold the black button, it'll lock for me. Now it's yelling at me right now because I have the car already on to cool it off because it is hot here in Austin, Texas. Uh, now. Power control as far as my driver's side seat oh, there. Um, so if I need to adjust anything, I absolutely can. I can take it up, down, forward, backwards, that sort of thing. Now let's move on to your door. I've got my window controls uh, with my auto up, down um, as far as my driver's side, my door locks, my window locks, and then my mirror controls. So let's hop in the car and we'll go over some features together. All right. So I'll turn the AC down just a little bit so it's not yelling at us. First three buttons I'll point over here on the left side. The road departure mitigation is not on currently. To turn that on, press and hold, you'll see the LED come on and that'll let you know that it's on. What that feature is, is if I'm driving down the road and I start to drive off the shoulder of the road, it'll give me an audible alert and it'll shake the wheel to give me or wake me up and pay attention. Now you can set that up to do a couple different things. If you just want the audible alert, you want to turn off the shake, you can do that. If, you, uh, if you're buying a car from me, we probably went through a personalized settings worksheet. If you didn't, no big deal. We'll touch on some of that stuff here momentarily to explain where those features are. Now above that is my Ford Collision Warning and Braking System. So in the event that I'm gonna rear end another car, first it'll give me an audible alert, it'll flash in the dash, and then if I don't apply my brakes, it'll start to apply the brakes for me. So this is part of Honda Sensing. Uh, next to that is Vehicle Stability Assist. This works with my traction control. So in the event that I go into a skid, it'll transfer power to the left or the right, whichever wheel has better traction uh, to help correct that skid. Only time I'd wanna turn that off is let's say I'm stuck in the mud, I'm spinning my tires while somebody's trying to push me out. That would be the reason I would wanna turn it off. Outside of that, I can't really come up with a good one. Now above that is the econ button. Whenever you turn that button on, you will see a green leaf appear right there, uh, letting you know that it is gonna help increase the gas mileage on the vehicle. 
Uh, in doing so though, it's gonna shut down some of the electrical systems in the front end of the car, affecting things like your AC controls, along with your accelerator. So just keep that in mind if you're using this feature. So if you're a more conservative driver, leave it on. You'll never know the difference. You'll get better gas mileage. You'll be good to go. If you're a little bit more heavy footed or pedal to the metal, maybe you turn it on and off as you go. It's no big deal. You can do it while you're driving at a stop anywhere. It doesn't matter. So just keep that in mind. So let's move up onto the steering wheel. First feature I'll show you is down here at the bottom and that's gonna be your Bluetooth controls. So to answer a phone call, to hang a phone call up, or to use your uh, Bluetooth as far as accessing uh, any of my contacts or jumping over to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto using Siri or OK Google. Now above that, I've got my uh, volume controls, so the plus and minus right here and jumping between tracks with my left and right. So I'm gonna turn on some audio here in a second and that way you can see how it works. All right, so I've got audio running here and I've got Sirius XM running, which your car comes with three months of it for free. So when I press left, it's gonna to toggle between those different stations that I have as my presets. So it's just kind of nice to know that it'll do that for me. And I've got up to 12 of them. So you can like plenty of music in this car. And then as far as my volume controls, I can control here or I have a volume knob right over here that I can use. So point of contention in previous generations on our touchscreen, now we have volume buttons in them because I know that was an issue uh, with people preferring them. Now up here, this will allow me to toggle between my audio, my navigation, or my Bluetooth. So it's just a quick jump between the three. So that's what the purpose of this button is, being able to toggle around. Uh, outside of that, I have a menu button down here. So if I have my audio pulled up and I wanna jump between like, and, and be able to seek, scan, do different things like that, I can talk, talk, excuse me, touch this and it will pull up those different options for me. Uh, so that's what the purpose of this is, is to keep my hands on the steering wheel and not have to be filling around on the touch screen. Now the car does have paddle shifters. Uh, this model and my sport model both come with these shifters. It's just kind of nice. It gives you a little bit more control over the car so that way you can adjust up shifting, down shifting, a little bit more uh, control as far as the performance base on the car. Now behind that, I have my, uh, my lighting controls. So I have them set to auto right now. And then my fog lights are turned off to turn them on. Just set the hash mark right there to on. Uh, now, on the tip of the blinker stock, you're gonna see a button right there. Anytime I press that button, you're gonna see a camera fire on on this car. That's called Honda Lane Watch. The red line is the end of my car. Red to orange is a car length, and then orange, that far orange line is another car length. The purpose of this camera is to prevent me from having to scan back and try to look over my, my back shoulder and away from the road. So if I can keep my head facing forward, I have a less chance of uh, rear-ending another car. Now I do have my Ford collision and braking system down here to help me with that, but I wanna make sure that I'm good to go. So that's the purpose of this camera. Anytime I turn that button on, it'll turn on and off, or anytime I fire my right blinker on, it fires the camera on for me. So that's the purpose of it. Now, over on the other side, I have my windshield wiper control. So pull down to affect the fronts. If you wanna mess with the back, just turn the knob right there and you're good to go from that standpoint also. All right, jumping up into my cluster, I'll just point out I got my RPMs over here with date, time, uh, and, and temperature. And then I've got my speedometer right there. And then over here, I've got my gas gauge. Right now you can see I don't have turn by turn directions set up. So it's just giving me a general compass. Now, if I wanna mess with some of the other settings in the vehicle, down on the right side, I've got some controls right here and you pull these towards you too. So if I hit this, it's gonna allow me to toggle through some different options on the vehicle. So vehicle settings where I can get to things like door locks, I can get to um, you know assisted setup stuff, keyless access. If I want it to where when I put my hand on the door handle, it'll automatically unlock all the doors versus one of the doors. So that's what the purpose of this is. Uh, and then I can exit out of that screen. So super cool, definitely you should play with it. Some cool features here. Uh, if you wanna affect your door locks, door setup, this is where I can do like auto door lock when I hit 10 miles an hour to automatically lock the doors. Um, and then I'm gonna schedule back out of that. And let's go down one more to unlocking. When I select that, when I hit 10 miles an hour right now, it's set up to where it'll, or excuse me, that was my door locks. So when I open the driver's side door, it'll then unlock the remaining doors of the car. So that's the purpose of this feature. And you can change it to some different options there too. Uh, so definitely some fun stuff to play with in here. So keep an eye out and look through it. Walkaway auto lock is the last one I like to touch on for people. What this is, is it's currently turned off. If I turn this on, which I'm gonna, uh, when I get out of the car, if I hit 10 feet from the car and I haven't locked the doors already, it'll automatically lock the doors if this function is on. The default though is off, so keep that in mind. If you're one of those people who forgets, maybe you wanna turn this function on. So that's what this is. Some different things you can play with in here. And all I'm doing is, is scheduling up, going down, and then selecting. And then when, you know, when I get to where I want, I can exit completely and go back to the general menu that you saw. So whether I want trip info, uh, my compass or stuff like that. Uh, because this car is all wheel drive, it'll also show me which version or which uh, I should say mode I'm driving in, whether it's two wheel or all wheel drive. So cool functions that you can jump through and that's all worked off of this side. Now above that is more of my Honda sensing features. The first one I'll point out is lane keep assist. To use these features though, I have to have the main button on. If it's on, you'll see ACC and LKS appear right here. And that'll stay on. So if I turn the car off and turn it back on, 
that will remain on. And then I can just set them to go. So Lane Keep Assist, when I turn that one on, you'll see some dotted lines appear. What it does is it uses a camera up in this black box right here to detect the lines on the road. Uh, when you're going over 45 miles an hour, now it'll pick up them. You'll see these fill in solid. When those are filled in solid, now if I start to drift to the left or the right, it'll correct for me and keep me centered in my lane. So it's just there to design to, to prevent you from drifting into another car if you got distracted by your cup of coffee that spilled, your dog, your kids, whatever it may be. Now, adaptive cruise control is what's right above that and uses these three buttons. So I would get up to my speed and press set. From there, I could then select the distance it keeps between me and the car in front of me using this button. When I press this, you're gonna see boxes appear. The more boxes, the more space it keeps between me and the car in front of me. So if I set it to 65, the guy in front of me slows down to 60, it keeps that designated spacing and slows down. When I get out from behind him, it then speeds back up to my designated speed and we move along down the road. Now, if you're saying to yourself, hey, Justin, that's great and all, but I don't want that. I just want classic cruise control. No big deal. Press and hold your finger on this button right here for a couple seconds. Now it's flipped over just to classic cruise mode. If I want to switch back, do the same thing, press and hold. Now I'm back to adaptive cruise control. So you have the option of using classic cruise or, or the adaptive cruise control. So that's a quick rundown of the, uh, the steering wheel. So let's touch on the touch screen real quick here. Touch on the touch screen, really. Um, so first thing I'll point out is your navigation. You have built-in navigation through Garmin that you can use. I'm not gonna go through this a whole lot. I'm just gonna show you that you can left, right, you can pinch, you can pull, you can do all those things that you would think. It's easy to access and easy to use. You have voice command over this too, using the voice command button right there. Uh, jumping out of that, let's go jump down to the phone. If I want to connect up my first uh, phone or access my, you know, my contact history, any of that stuff, I would do so right here. So to add a phone, yes, scroll down, search for the phone, and go from there. If I'm adding a second or third phone, I want to go to settings. From there, I want to go to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And then from there, I'm going to go to the device list because I want to add something to that list. And then add device list, and I could search for a phone, find it, and connect up. So you can add up to, I believe, six phones to a car. Uh, under settings, uh, this is just some general stuff that you can get to, clock info, all this. You can play through this and, and kind of have some fun. Uh, if you have questions, just let me know if you're looking for something specific and we'll get you taken care of. Smartphone connection is set up for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. My sport and above models all have access to this. The purpose of this is I can plug my phone in the USB, which is right down below over here, and you'll see the bottom one has a picture of the phone on it. That's the one you need to connect into. From there, it will pull up on the screen, um, and I have access to my maps, my messages, my music, iHeartMedia, radio, um, I've got access to Spotify, Pandora, WhatsApp, so a lot of different functions that I can access on the touch screen and use voice command for. So I can press and hold the beat for Siri and then ask Siri, Siri, give me directions to such and such. I have access to Google Maps, I have access to Waze, I have access to Apple Maps, so super cool function, take advantage of it. Uh, Audio-wise, let's go through your options. I'm going to switch to the source right here, and this is going to be all my different choices. FM, AM, I have 90 days of satellite radio. I have USBs you just saw. Both are sitting right down there that I can plug thumb drives into and store music that way. Uh, iPods, I can plug pretty much with an, anything with an eye in. Uh, Bluetooth, I can wirelessly connect up to my phone, any device that allows for it, and be able to stream music. It is Pandora compatible, so I could wirelessly connect up and be able to access uh, my Pandora account along with my stations uh, and jump around like, dislike tracks, jump to the next, all that, whether it be off the touchscreen or off the steering wheel. Um, so that is a quick rundown of the audio in the vehicle. Uh, the information screen is just going to pull up general tripometer information. Uh, so if you want to do, you can see what, how many miles you have on this tank of gas, current and previous trips. If I jumped on my menu screen, maybe I just want a general clock or wallpaper pulled up. I can do that right here. So if I just like a more plain, plain classic look, I don't want a lot going on, I can do that. Uh, Honda Link is set up to where couple different things. First thing it'll do is give you maintenance reminders and recall notices. Uh, depending on the trim level of the car or the vehicle they're looking at. So if you're comparing this to a CRV, the CRV may offer different options. To know what all it will give you, go to hondalink.com and check it out. Because some of my cars you can start from your phone. Other cars you can control the door locks from your phone. So it's just something to check out. If you go there, it'll pull up. You can check any single car, any trim level. So check that out. Additionally, Honda Link is set up to where if I get into an accident, a uh, Honda can call my car if the airbags deploy is when this would happen. So if the airbags deploy, Honda will call me. If I don't answer and let them know something, they're gonna assume I'm unconscious and they can call 911 for me. This is 100% free. Uh, so it's much like an OnStar or, or something like that that would normally be subscription-based, except mine is free. So keep that in mind, take advantage of it. It's part of owning a Honda. That's why this car has a five-star overall crash rating. My app list down here will just give me access to like a uh, browser, calculator, downloader. Uh, I, I will point out, a lot of people ask me about the app installer. It's set up to where you can't just plug in like a USB with apps on it, like APK files, and download uh, Netflix or anything like that. They've set it up a little bit differently, so just be aware that you can't do that. Uh, there are videos on people who have cracked the screens or the, the, the drive on it and been able to do that, but you are risking uh, avoiding your warranty. So just something to keep in mind. 
Now my AC controls down here are digital, so my display is right there. I have heated seats next to it with LEDs to let me know if they're on. Uh, so I don't think I need to explain much about AC controls. Uh, my shifter is classic setup. I can see where I'm at. It'll light up the LED to let me know. You'll see this little button right here. If I pop that out, I could stick my key down in it. It would allow me to shift the car. So let's say the car won't start, it's died, but I need to get it up onto a, a tow truck. That's what the function of this is. Pop it out, stick the key in, I can shift, and now I can roll it up on a flatbed if I need to. Now past that is my parking brake. Parking brake is electronic. To set it, put my foot on the brake, lift up on the trigger, it will set. It will alert me that it's set by setting park right there. When I push down on that trigger with my foot on the brake, it releases it, and you'll feel it move under your foot when you do this. Now the next button I'm gonna show you is right below that is brake hold. To use this, I have to have my seat belt on because that's part of this function. Now what this button does, so let's move the car into drive and I'm gonna turn the brake hold button on. So you'll see brake hold appear up there in a couple spots and when I initially turned it on, it showed right there. So right now I'm in drive and I have my foot on the brake. If I let my foot off the brake while the car's in drive, I am not moving. So what the purpose of this function is, is that if I'm in stop and go traffic, I can move five feet forward. So we move forward, we come to another complete stop. The car's still in drive. I have my foot on the brake. Now that we're at a complete stop, I let my foot off. It holds the brake while we're in drive. So it's a convenience feature is what the purpose of brake hold is. So that's how it works. Now, if you don't have your seatbelt on, so let's say you go through your drive through and you need to reach out there and you take your seatbelt off, it's gonna disengage this. But what it's gonna do to save you is it's gonna immediately throw the parking brake on. Um, so while the car is still in drive, it threw the parking brake on so I wouldn't roll into a car in front of me. So know that if you're using this feature, you're not gonna accidentally roll into a car if you take your seatbelt off, but be aware that you have to have your seatbelt on for it to keep functioning. So that's how this function works. So we're gonna need to throw the car in reverse, but this is a perfect opportunity to show you the backup camera in the car. I've got three different views on this backup camera so I can touch and scroll through these, but let me throw the emergency brake off and we'll back this sucker up and show you some things. So I need to back up this spot anyway, but you can see I'm getting real close to some floor mats there. If I touch on this screen, I can jump over it and see straight down and see where those are. So if that was my kid's tricycle, their bicycle, something like that, I could see where this is and make sure I'm paying attention. So sorry if you're having a hard time seeing on my screen. Uh, me shooting a screen from my screen is not working out as well as I would like it. But you can see that the item is right there. And now this dotted line is where my hatch is gonna open up to. Uh, and then the line above that, the solid line, is going to let me know if I was parallel parking, what amount of space I would need to leave for the vehicle behind me to be able to get in and out. So that's how this function works. So that is your backup camera in this vehicle. Outside of that, it's pretty self-explanatory stuff. Sliding armrests, I can slide it up and back. My cup holders in this car are probably the, the most impressive. I've got it where I can push down in there and have extra space. I can press the buttons on the sides here and, and open them back up, or I can have it set up to where I have three different areas to store in. So. I don't know what they got going on there, but it's not like any other vehicle I have. Above me, I do have home link, so I can set up a garage clicker, gate clicker, any of those. I do have a moonroof, I can throw it back. All I gotta do is pull one button and it'll open it all the way up. I'm not gonna do that all the way though. And then if I wanna crack it, press directly up on this button and then it will crack it. So now it's cracked. So that's what's going on from that standpoint. Other than that, this is the Honda HRV Touring. It only comes in an all wheel drive model, so keep that in mind if you're looking at it. Um, if you have questions about it, just reach out. It got six airbags in the car, five star overall crash rating, Honda sensing built into the car, navigation built into the car. Every bell and whistle you can throw in an HRV is in this car. Uh, you can reach me by commenting on the YouTube video. You can always call me at 512 443 4300, or you can email me at the letter J and then Fuller, F U L L E R, at howdyhonda.com.